basically. So, um, you know, it, there's uh, lots of different ways you can do this, but an easy way, I think, is to set out the external walls first. So looking at these measurements here, you can see that we have a uh, retaining wall and, uh, and that's what I've drawn uh, so far. Now, this one is, uh, for memory, the only one I didn't dimension all that accurately because you'll see that um, you know, when you go to do your next level, the position of this wall isn't all that important. That's outside the building anyway. So, coming back to the plan again, just so you know what I mean. So, I'm going to go ahead and start putting in the walls of the actual building. I've got enough there to start with my retaining wall. I've got those, this wall and this one. And I'll worry about this little one later. So, I'm going to go ahead and get onto the main external walls, which we can see there are 290. So, again, I need to... Make a new wall type. Maybe starting with this one, I can duplicate it. Yep. Give it a new name and obviously change the uh, size to match the name. Right now. Just again taking a rough look at this. Okay, so a good way to draw this is going clockwise with finish face exterior. Again, making sure the height is set to level one. And notice how I haven't positioned the wall all that precisely. Just drawing a couple of walls in there. And so now, looking at this dimension here, we've got 190 wall thickness for the retaining wall and then 110 mil gap between the retaining wall and the new wall I've just drawn. So I can select this wall now, change the 190. And then here we've got 1300 between the retaining wall and the vertical wall. So we can select that vertical wall and change that to 1300. So that's going to work for um, simple set outs like that. But as you add more detail in, you realise that uh, it'll help if you draw in dimensions. So using aligned is fine. I'm just going to change that to wall faces. And then draw dimensions for the things that I've set out so far. And then I can keep track of all of these things. So I've got that dimension for the boundary, so I don't need that again. I'll just dimension my wall. And then the set out, the wall thickness, and that's all I have so far. bit hard to read that, so I'll just tidy that up a little bit. So it really doesn't hurt. In fact, it helps a lot if you draw in the dimensions for these things as you go, where you've got a complicated set out like that. So now, uh, working across, uh, we've got a uh, series of internal walls that are 100 mil. So I'm just going to draw in uh, generic 100 mil walls. Not worrying too much about the location line because these are internal walls, so it doesn't really matter which way they face. and then back to a uh, 290 wall.
for the end. So I'm working in the same dimensions are set out. I'm following these rooms based on, hopefully, uh, this row of dimensions at the top. So now I can just put those dimensions in. I've got the walls I need, and now I can worry about the spacing between them. So 3740, starting from the right. And again, following my own advice, I'll put the dimensions in. So, to change each of these walls, you have to remember to select the wall, not the dimension. So, the bathroom, 2590. And then 610. Okay, so now all of those rooms should be the right size. Uh, measuring it across. So then maybe the next wall we'd think about doing would be the uh, wall on the bottom of this room and uh, again not worry much about the initial position. coming across and drawing in a little L-shape because I know I'll need that for the stairs. And then I can come back and put in the measurements. So this one should be 3760. Okay, so by dimensioning this, it really is going to make your life easier. Uh, now, it's giving me a problem there just because this wall is a bit too low. I'm going to bring that up a bit. So when I move this wall, that wall doesn't uh, chop this one off. That's a fairly simple thing to do. So now, uh, 3760 I think it was. And then we have a stairwell here, so we need another wall down below. Coming across, using trim, and then maybe rather than using trim on this wall I've just used the grip on the end wall to drag it up. And then back and uh, I'll put some more dimensions in. So to the stairwell, she 3210, and then a thousand for the stairwell itself. So I can't just change this measurement here, I need to select the wall below. This one's in the right position, I'm trying to move this one down below if I want the stairwell to be a thousand now. I can change that dimension now. So now I know at least this room is finished. And so you can just work through the whole plan like that. And if you add dimensions as you go, it should be pretty straightforward.